Good job, Vice Chair. I know. I've been waiting for months <laughs> to do that. <laughs> it's, it's the most important, useful job there. You okay. noticed it all the way from West Hundreds. That's pretty good. Yeah. Different time zone and all. It is. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when she says that. Yeah. I hate it when your surgeon says that. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my meeting here. I don't know how to get back. Hold on. Well, you're, you're two tiles on a Zoom screen. That's pretty hard to do, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, because my audio wasn't working, my computer had issues, and then I still haven't gotten all my issues resolved, I guess. All right, let me see if I can get... I don't think Gary has either. <laughs> all right, sorry. I'm going to have to sign back in on my computer, I think. I don't know what happened here. While you're doing that, I'm going to get a drink of water. Make sure you get cucumbers and raspberries. I'm all out of raspberries, darn it. Cucumbers? Got cucumbers, yeah. Fresh out of the garden. Put them in your water. Well, I don't have time to cut them up. Oh. Should I put a whole cucumber in? <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry. That's okay. No be perfect. How do you spell Betsy? It's Betsy Geysers. It is, yeah. I'm not sure the spelling. It doesn't have the L in that place, though. So. Nobody has any suggestions? I can look it up. For Betsy, I think it's G A I S E R. Yeah. I S E R. That's what well, I had. No L. Oh, no, no L. L. Thank you. There you go. <clears throat> Did we get new Kelsey Mountain Road signs? Not yet. They all went down the jelly holes. <laughs> Apparently, they're, they've gone somewhere. It's good to me so far. How about you, John? Yeah, it looks good. Okay.
Is walk by hand good? Or is it confusing? Um, I, I understand it. How about everyone else? Does it make sense? Well, it should probably be clear that horses also are included there too, to be walked. How about pedestrians? Can they walk by hand? <laughs> they're little. Well, yeah, they probably have to be if they're little. Yeah, like Davis, good. you wouldn't want to just send Davis out there running around by himself. <laughs> Horses should be walked by hoof, shouldn't they? <laughs> Unless they have shoes on. They lack toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if I'm scrolling did, too. Did we make motions to a point? The, the two new members of the Conservation Commission? Yeah, it says, yeah, you motioned. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I would imagine so. I think, I think I we did. did. Mike must have. Because John second. Have, yeah, well, no, we, we, we joined that, but I think we also maybe part of that was that we appointed those two guys. Do you remember, Mike? No, I do not, John. We probably did, I would imagine. Yeah, I I'd so. imagine too. If it had been recorded, we could find out. <laughs> it was recorded. We got two twos, two TO twos in launching <clears throat> on either side of launching. Where are you? Mick McGuire is very close to launching to the online transfer station. We'll get rid of that second two. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> I'm still unclear on who, if anybody, is our animal control officer. Like I thought it was a vacancy. I believe it is. And it's not. I don't think it's. But I think Catherine thought, or she told us that Tammy thought she was the animal control officer, which, which she not, isn't. She's the pound keeper, which is a different job description, right? Right. Can she be both? She could be. I think. <coughs> I 
We can offer a reward for anybody who <coughs> knows who's dumping tires. Yes. A pat on the back, at least. A gallon of milk the... and a dozen eggs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and all the loose cattle in Tunbridge. That's right. An <laughs> idea. You have some extra little bull calves up there, Gary. That would be a prize. Yeah. They're so cute. <laughs> I have some that are partly grown if anybody wants them. Mariah uh, Lawrence was looking for a quote for a fence around the backyard, not the front yard of the library. Oh, is a backyard? Yeah. Has a backyard? Yes. She was on the radio today talking about it. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a front yard. I just assumed it was a front yard. I didn't not know there was a backyard. There is a backyard. He wants to fix it up so people can meet up there. Well, I thought the jelly holes was my favorite sentence, but I think it's Mullen said he would pick up the brush and see has a lot of free time on his hands. I think that's my favorite <laughs> sentence. I haven't got that far, so. <laughs> I saw the truckload go by one day. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I saw the limbs are gone. That looks good. Did you look at that tree, Gary? Yeah, it's pretty tough shape. Yeah. We should probably cut it down and plant something smaller. That blooms seven months a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Looks I thought good. it was an extremely long meeting, and now I know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have nothing but time, Gary. That's me. I make a motion we accept the April 13th, 2021 minutes. I second that. I, I third it. So, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Good job, Wendy. Aye. Okay, it's road report next. I got a brief brief report. Um, Rodney has been riding around town, which is pretty surprising. But he's been counting up signs that are missing and is going to put in an order. Um, he said that he had some small signs left from the good old days before we got the big signs. Mm -hmm. And I told him to go ahead and put them up for the time being, if they're going to get stolen anyways. Um, and, but he's, he's going to get order signs that he does not have. Um, the Dickerman Hill job is going to start week after next and the road's going to be closed during the day and open at night um rodney's gotta um get down in there and move the brook over a little bit 
and they're going to cut some trees down. Pat Ross was up. And so they're going to have a, a feller buncher come in and cut some trees down. Rodney said that might happen this week. How far um, up Dickerman are they going to be, Mike? Excuse me? How far up Dickerman are they going to be? Like, can people go down hard scrabble to, to get around it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's it's up. Um, just a little ways up past, there's a house, two houses on the right-hand side, and it's past the second house is where the work's going to be done. And it's maybe a quarter mile up in there or something. <clears throat> And um, Pat Ross called this an emergency um, project. That way it can get done right off, even though it's not really an emergency project, but that's what he's calling it so they can get it done right off. Is the feller buncher going to cost us more money or is that part of the contract that we already... I just assume it's part of the contract, but... Um, because Rodney didn't think they'd even let them cut any trees. Mm -hmm. And then Pat Ross come in and said, oh, yeah, we got to get them out of here. Hmm. So, and they don't want them, you know, dropping them into the brook or anything. So they got to get, get a filler buncher to s pluck them out of there. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. Um. Um, Matt's been working on the town forest, new road there and back of the town garage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess he had a lot of it done and then it rained and they had to go up and do some re-ditching and water bears and stuff. Um, and everything's been running all right. And they've been grading as much as possible. Um, and they're going to go on to a, the four day work week in, in a week and a half, the middle, middle of May, I guess. They figured, oh, they figured mud season would be over by then. Yep. And that is it for the road report. Is there any word on the, <clears throat> the new truck or is that just still oh. out there? No, yep. just waiting for a tenko. Yep. Mike, did Rodney ever tell you how how we did on our winter supplies of sand and? No, carpet? I didn't think to ask him that. Um, we were talking about stone for the road and stuff, but I never actually asked him how much we had on the yard in the yard. But I will ask him that. All right. If that's the end of the road report, I got nothing to add. How about you, John? I mean, the roads aren't in bad shape. They're still puckering up a few places here and there, but they're drying up. So. Well, my brother went on that Chelsea woodchuck hunt there Saturday, and he drove 250 miles. <laughs> which is hard for me to believe, but he said most of it was in Tumbridge because every time they went out of Tumbridge, they ran into horrible roads. So yeah. <laughs> he said Randolph and Braintree was terrible. And uh, so he said he did most of his driving around Tumbridge. Hmm. Good for him. I guess. All right. I guess we accept the road report unofficially as it is. <clears throat> All Great. right, Kathy next. Kathy Galuza, yep. Hey All guys. Right. I see you're up. Yeah, how's it going? Good. Um, I sent an email that had some of what I, we want to do this year. Yeah. Um, to, one of the things is we need another load of dirt for the ball field. Um, the sand that we get in from New, New Hampshire so with no stones and stuff in it. Um, it's about $3,000. Um, we also want to put a sprinkler system into the field so that we can keep the field wet so that it, the sand doesn't blow away when it gets really dry in the summer. 
That's what's been happening to us. We got an estimate on that for $2,100 for a person that does irrigation. Um, what else? Uh, banners, we're gonna go back out with our banners. We're gonna renew the banners. We've been working with Janet um, Zug from town. So she's gonna make the new banners to hang up and um, we're gonna renew them for $200 a year. Um, they need to be replaced. We didn't do anything with them last year because of just we were in the middle of COVID and it didn't make sense to be hitting money up, hitting people up for for banners, for advertisement for the ball field that we didn't use really. Um, we were thinking about doing um, cow pie bingo and maybe ice cream at Memorial Day, but is Memorial Day now not gonna happen? That is correct. Okay, so is everything gonna happen on July 4th? We haven't set the date sure yet but that's what we were thinking about okay so maybe we'll just wait and and do that um then then we're not because we were thinking may was early but if anything was going to happen at memorial day we wanted to be able to do the cow pie bingo and ice cream but we can push that off um the leagues are are up for using the field again this year um i know i'm in the women's league and our league is sticking to the state rules with wearing masks and um, social distancing. And um, that's required for our league on whatever field we play on. Um, I mentioned to the men's league that has two teams down there um, that, that they needed to do the same thing. We needed to stick with the state rules. Um, and we have all of our signs up. We have plenty of masks. We have plenty of hand sanitizer for people if they need it. Um, what else did I need to tell you about? We're talking about doing improvements to the pool. Matt Loftus has been over and looked at it and is gonna to try to do a little work before we open it back up. Um, we wanna to try to do, and we're thinking about doing it this weekend, um, burgers and fries out of the cook shack to for like on a Saturday for when people are going to the dump. You drive by, you can place an order and we can bring it to your car so we can social distance and stuff still. So. Um, we've talked about um, Luke Barnaby, Jeremiah Karen have expressed interest in joining the rec, so we're hoping that they join us. Um, Luke had an idea about maybe getting the horseshoe pits back up and running. They're, they're down there. They're just, they've been filled in and we need to put poles in and then we were thinking of covering them with cones so nobody would drive over them. Um, what else? Do you guys have more questions for me? Well, you were going to police the, the road during yep, the gonna, tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we that last tournament, I think we got the road figured out pretty good. Um, so I think we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to create a little more parking up there at the side so that less people even need to park near the road. But yeah, we're on top of the road and all the team captains know, you know, it's one of the things that we're telling team captains when they come that they're responsible for making sure people stay out of the road. Um, it, it's their team. They're responsible. Their team's going to be the one that's in trouble if, if they're not following the rule and not doing things on the road. And we were also thinking like the horseshoe pits and stuff might give another activity out of the road for people to do um, to help that out. And we talked about possibly putting up a volleyball court. The idea is to get more activities for people to be able to use the field. And the other thing is we want to try to get um, Wi-Fi down there so that we can put up cameras. We need Wi-Fi to do it. And it, we found it's fairly inexpensive. Um, we haven't got all the quotes together yet, but if it's a monthly fee, I mean, we have 32,000 in our account and I think it would be worth having cameras and having, you know, there's a lot of people down there using it, be able to make phone calls if there's an emergency. Um, tell me more about the sprinkler system that you're looking for. I'll, I'll send you a copy of the quote, but it would just be in the ball field area. Um, and it would just we would turn it on. It wouldn't come on like automatic. It wouldn't be an automatic. It, we would turn it on and use it um, to keep the field wet when it gets really dry. Because what happens is we the sand blows off the field in the mm -hmm. summertime. So we wind up, it, it would save us in the long run because we won't have to keep, keep replacing the sand. So it's a buried in the ground system then? Yep. Okay, yep. Yeah. And I can get you all the details, Gary. I got the quote. I can send it over to you guys in email. No, sure. I was just wondering what it was, and, and that explains it. But go ahead and send it over. Sure. Okay. Um, 
we talked about and and this is like throwing back ideas of getting um some lights for the ball field so so people could play later and we, when we have our tournaments we could have more teams um we don't have a clue what the cost is and we haven't got that far but that's a thought that we've been tossing around um and we haven't really talked about it as a committee it's just an idea that we talked to luke about everybody's been talking about it but we haven't decided if that's if it's worth the investment or not yet <laughs> um but to give you guys a heads up and i think that's about it i mean um hopefully we can get back up and doing our tournaments this summer but we're not going to try a big tournament until we see the state really open things back up kathy yeah who I just wondered who's on the rec committee now, and and also if if any member had been picked for the or or volunteered for the trails committee. So it's me, Matt, Andy, and Seth Johnson. And Seth Johnson volunteered for the trails committee. I sent him that email today. He said he would do it. He's been in contact, uh, so he's good. He's happy to do it. That's great. Thank you for um, that. Yeah, and he'd be a great one to do it. He he knew the he knew the people and the connections so I, it works out well um and so and then future members we're hoping to add is jeremiah and luke jeremiah karen and luke barnaby yep uh, it'd be great to have more members because me matt and andy get spread quite thin when we try to do very many fundraisers or anything because <laughs> there's only so many hours <laughs> um and it's nice to have fresh ideas you know yeah more people we get more ideas about things and options we could do it's a really great space and it it would be nice to make it so that more than just baseball and softball people want to be there so when do you want to buy this sand for the field that's right off that that one will we need to do right off um we put a mound in for the little league and we wanted to get the sand down and and the mound in with the new sand so that that one's right off so you're making a special request tonight then? Yes. Can I make a special request to approve sand for the field? For the How place? much money you got, Kathy? In our account? Yeah. 32000 Okay. Do you want to make a motion, Mike? I make a motion that um, we let the rec committee purchase um, sand for the baseball field up to what three thousand dollars you said yeah i think it was like three thousand eighty eight dollars okay up to thirty one hundred dollars that works i second that all right all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. <clears throat> you got um it. what's your timeline on your sprinkler um we haven't talked to the person yet to find out when they can do it. So okay. why don't I get that for you? And I'll, I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll put in the request next meeting if we want to get it approved or is it something we should pre-approve? We want to do it at the beginning of the summer. So should we do that now? Well, no, you should, unless you've got a real strong, uh, official, uh, uh, quote on it. No, I do. And I, I don't have it on me. I'll email it to you guys and then, We'll do it next meeting. Even, yeah, you can do it next meeting. There's no rush on that. And and the other thing I want to get approval on is if we're going to do these burgers and dogs and stuff out of the cook shack, I need to stock the cook shack back up. So it'll be a purchase for meat and stuff like like I did for the breakfast, but we're doing it for the cook shack. Um, we're going to try go low for the first month, see how it goes, and then maybe we'll do it a little more often throughout the summer to make some money. How much you expect to spend on supplies for the first one? Um, I would say it'll probably be like four or 500 bucks. Okay. But we, yeah, I'm guessing that's the ballpark it's going to be in. I haven't, I heard meat through the roof, so I haven't been shopping for a while for stuff because we haven't done breakfast for a year, but I'm guessing between four and 500, I can get it stocked up. And then if we don't sell it at those things, well, it'll be food in the cook shack that can carry over and we can use in, in the tournaments later on in the summer. So it won't be wasted because we have freezers and refrigerators there so yep um, if, but um and that's all i can think of that we got going right now all right well, Kathy, yeah is is 
there water that comes into the cook shack? No water into the cook shack. We lug water down. We have a big jug. We do. We um, Henry Swayze did give us a, a on-demand water heater, and um, we've talked about getting like a, a big. We've been talking about ways to get water into the cook shack, and maybe when we do the sprinkler system, we'll be able to figure out a way to make it work. That's what I was thinking, you know, about either a hydrant or at least water to the cook shack while, while we're doing drainage. Yeah, that would be great. Um, it's one of the things we've thought about because when we, we lug all the stuff home to wash it and back, and it would be great to have water right there. And we do, when Kevin was alive, Henry did, he was in the process of figuring out water. And Henry did install the, he did hang up and install the water heater. Kevin did, somebody did, so it's there. It's just not hooked up yet. <laughs> he, he donated it to us, so. Um, but yeah, and hopefully you guys can buy and get hamburgers and hot dogs if we do it this weekend. We were thinking that with green up day, it might go nicely. Yep. Everybody would be out and about. We have the the dump going and we have green up day. So maybe people would be hungry and stop in and get a burger. All right, we'll spread the word. Okay. <clears throat> All, right. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, thank you. If you guys think thanks, of anything. Kathy. All right, thanks. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. What's up, yeah, Matt? The, uh, the EC fiber board appointments. And I see that Richard Dittvig is is in the room. So I don't know if you want to get him on or um, it's Henry, Amy, and Richard Digvig. R Henry would be a voting member. Amy Frost up for first delegate. Richard Digvig, second delegate. So I don't know if you want him to speak to that. Sure. As long as he's right there. Go ahead, Dick. You're muted. Still can't hear you. There we go. There you go. Um, it, this is just a standard yearly requirement and needs your signature and that's the end of it really. All right. I think the town reports have been pretty good on describing uh, EC fiber and, and the, the money that's coming into it now, which is really pretty amazing. So. Uh, there's a lot going on there and it'll spread out to more towns in time. All right. Would someone like, like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that <clears throat> we appoint Henry Swayze voting member to EC Fiber Board and have Amy Frost as the first delegate and Dick Dig Big Dig Big for the second delegate. I second that. All right, any further discussion on it? If none, let's vote. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 It's okay. um, unanimous. Gary, I already have that paperwork. It's at the, the town offices on the desk for you. Okay, I'll come in. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, Gary? Yep. So the next is appoint members to trail committee. And um, did you, I don't know if you had time to see, there was another email. I see Laura Ginsburg's on. She sent an, a, an email today with the planning commission's recommendations because there were so many people. So I don't know. I did send you guys all an email with the planning commission's recommendations. I didn't see that email, but I did see the one that Laura sent that said she was going to send it. So, but if Laura, yeah, so, to, uh, if, if, if Laura wants to speak on that, we could do that. Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so, a couple of weeks ago, we were here pitching the idea of Trails Committee. Mm -hmm. 
you all approved it. So we put a Google um, form, which is like a survey together, put it out, announced it on Front Porch Forum and the Tunbridge Listserv a couple of times each between then. We got 15 responses and I saw the list of names on the agenda tonight. I wasn't sure where those came from. They were mostly duplicates and some people I, I saw had emailed you and they copied me. If people emailed me and hadn't filled out the form, I asked them to fill out the form just so that we had like a standardized intake procedure. Some folks nominated themselves and other folks nominated other people. So we had 15. Do you want to know all 15 of them? Sure. So, okay. So we had Todd Tyson, Isaac Saka, Kevin Rose, Ellen Hosford, Scott Beavers, Sean Ogle, Lynn Hadley, Christina Martz, Rudy, uh, Liz York, Molly McDonough, Ann Linehan, Susan Salster, Ken Ashley. And then you had an additional name on your list of Jonathan Bicknell. Um, he was not on our intake form. So we, um, the planning commission had a conversation yesterday. We wanted to give people as much time as possible. So the intake form closed on Sunday. We met yesterday and we nominated um, from our end, Rudy, to represent the planning commission seat. Conservation commission will be represented by Betsy Geyser and as you just heard, recreation um, committee is Seth Johnson. And then for the other five seats, so we had originally pitched a max of eight seats. So between five and eight, we thought starting with more is probably a good idea in case people drop off, then we're not always coming back to you to nominate new people. Mm -hmm. We felt that a really strong mix of skills and perspectives um, so I guess I'm going to back up for a second. The names that we nominated are pe some people participated in the trails meetings um, that we hosted and others did not. What we were really looking for was a mix of ages, diverse perspective, diverse trail use, um, and not coming in from a strong perspective in either direction or any direction really, but a real openness to learning and hearing from others and working with landowners. So there are some people who participated quite a lot in the calls um, and were vocal in their opinions. And so we wanted, to, because this is a quite a tense situation at the moment, we felt like while those people in many cases are subject matter experts in their own right, that they could be advisors to the committee as appropriate, but may not need to actually serve on the trails committee um, in like a formal role. So the folks that we, um, the planning commission would move forward as your slate of candidates to consider would be Isaac Saka, Kevin Rose, Ellen Hosford, Ann Linehan and Susan Solster. And I've um, spoken to or emailed with all of them today and they are all interested and pending your approval committed to being on the trails committee. All right, that's eight members. We try to be good with math. <laughs> well, I got 10 fingers, so I'm doing okay. <laughs> to get to 11, I have trouble. All right. Um, I'm okay with all those people. Any comments from West Tunbridge? No, well, I guess good, good with me. How about East Tunbridge? Who who is Sue Salster? I know she, I think she's been in committees and is is she? Well, go ahead, Laura. Yeah. So Sue, um, the information that we have about Sue Salster is that she's been a resident of Tunbridge for thirty six years, an avid outdoors person, 
um, is a birder foraging photographer. Um, I believe that she is a horseback rider. Um, was an was a nurse um, of emergency medicine, and yeah, that's. I I also don't know Sue personally, but some of the folks on the planning commission do. Was Mike? Do you remember? Was she the one who had the ATVs riding by her? She lived. No. She drove horses on. Who was who was the one who drove horses on the road that comes out of the Gifford covered bridge? That's um, Maureen McCullough, I think. She's on her no. on her screen right now. I don't know if she's listening or not. Maureen McCullough is. Right. No, I don't think it's it's not Maureen. It's somebody who lives over on your side of town. And I think if you <clears> went, you know, off Kelsey Mountain down and came out the Gifford Covered Bridge. She was on that road and had a lot of ATV traffic by her that were scaring her horses. I remember that. Um, I don't remember who it was. Yeah, I remember that now. I thought that might be Sue Solster, but. Could be. You got her address, Laura? Just her email address. Hello. Is Maureen, maybe you can answer the question. What would you like to know? Who is Susan Solster? Yes, she has horses. We drive horses. Yes. She's near you then? Yes. Okay. Gifford Hill. Gotcha. That's what we wanted to know. Okay. All right. Does somebody... Oh, I, go was ahead, just, I was just going to ask, how how baked in are we to to the five to eight members? I think that's at the pleasure of the select board. Because how would you guys feel if we added Jonathan Bicknell just because I think he wanted to get involved in things in Tunbridge and this, you know, he grew up here, been away and come back. And uh, I think committees with an odd number are always good just in case their votes too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, All right, I'm happy. Me. Well, let's add Jonathan then. Can you send me his contact information, John? Sure. Thanks. Hmm. I had a question, but it's gone now. So anyway, we'll keep talking. <clears throat> I guess um, we need a motion to, I think we need a motion anyway, to nominate these people to our trails committee. I make a motion that to a point. we appoint the people that Laura has just um, told us about who's all the names I can't remember. <laughs> Did you get all the names, Wendy? Um, I can look at the video. I, I am one short. Um, I have Isaac, Kevin, and Susan, Jonathan, and then the three reps. So I'm missing one person. Ellen. Ellen? Yeah. Ellen Hosford. Okay, thank yeah. you. Plus Jonathan Bicknell. Yes. Yeah, I got him. I second Mike's motion. All right. All in favor of accepting all of these nine people um, to our trails committee, please say yes. Aye. Aye. Or aye, yes, aye. <clears throat> One thing I'd like to, I was pondering the other day was <clears throat> that now we've appointed these people to this committee, what do we want them to do? Um, and do we want them just for the, for the, um, the business at hand with the legal trails, or do we want them to continue on after the legal trails stuff after July 13th or 15th? Do we want them to stay on and, and kind of manage our town forest trails? 
because I've seen some emails about that too. So I guess I, I don't uh, throw that out there and see what people think. <clears throat> Can I share my thoughts, Gary? Go ahead. So I, I think that the um, first task at hand is the legal trail. So the four legal trails, the two and a half miles worth, um, because that is the most pressing issue. I think there are a lot of opportunities for a trail specific um, multi committee represented group to have some amazing impacts on this town. So we've got events that come through with hikers, bikers, horseback riders that use the roads, um, class four roads. And there's a real opportunity to think about how these roads connect to both public and private properties to encourage people to come to town. They'll, we may not have a store now, but if we do have a store in the future, they can shop at the store. They're staying at people's Airbnbs. It's a real opportunity for economic development in the town and to get people here to sell Tunbridge, you know, as a place to visit, support our neighboring communities as well. And I think there's going to be maintenance needs, whatever is decided about the legal trails and their use, they're going to need some love and attention for years to come. Um, so I think having a group of people who are dedicated to that particular task makes a lot of sense for this community of outdoor enthusiasts. I agree with that, <clears throat> but I, um, I was thinking about the town forest, two different lots we have. One of the town forest committee's goals was education. And, and I just see that if, if the trails committee after this initial thing was done, if they wanted to expand a little bit and, and actually make some trails and, and improve them signage, whatever in the town forest, that'd be really kind of neat in my opinion. Yeah, I think it would be amazing to have a group of people that are looking at opportunities to expand the town's trail network in many, you know, in the town forest or on private property and ways to connect and work with the four town group. So I think there's a there's a lot of, a lot opportunity of and value to having this group stay in existence long term. Okay, so the short term goal is to deal with the with the illegal trails issue, and then the longer term, and so. I'd like to maybe have a, a, an end date. You mentioned July 15th uh, of bringing a, a suggestion to the select board or to the planning commission and the planning commission brings it to the select board. The July 15th is for an interim report. So I'm hoping that we can get up and going. I'm gonna um, provide just a little bit of guidance for the group about the questions that we've dealt with and contact so that they can get started. And then I think July 15th is the date that we're hoping that we can kind of assess where we're at, what gaps in knowledge we still have, what we figured out, where we're headed. And then the work, it feels like the work will likely continue at least through the summer, if not into the fall. Uh, but the planning commission <clears throat> is gonna continue to meet to support the, the goals of the trails committee. We're gonna start looking at class four road usage, uh, of when events come into town, those kinds of considerations. So it's gonna be a collaborative effort to bring the select board um, like a wraparound policy for mm -hmm. usage of the legal trails and the class four roads because the state groups them together. So we feel like we should give a policy that's um, reflective of how the state talks about usage of those assets. Sure, I mean, that sounds great. All right, I see John Echeverria, you have your little yellow hand up. <clears throat> Thank you, very quick question. Um, th does the Vermont open meeting law apply to this group? My, my um, uh, quick and dirty research suggests that it does, but I just wanted to throw out that understanding and see if that was shared by all concerned. I. My opinion is it does. The open meeting law does apply to this this committee, but I mean that's my opinion. So they should uh, warn their meetings and keep no keep minutes. All right. Any other comments? God, that's too easy. 
Well, I don't know if you were around, Laura, but a couple of months ago, we, we discussed starting a trails committee in town, um, not specifically about legal trails and also a food committee. And so it's interesting that the trails committee has happened. And so, um, yeah, I think it's great if they focus on legal, the legal trail issue right now, but um, hopefully they'll, they'll have some ideas uh, and, you know, we can sunset this or we can keep it going and they can uh, evolve. I think that'd be great to, to always have something like this. Brenda hired him to do our apple trees. Oh. And he told her he does not agree with bikes being on Orchard Road. I need an all mute, Barry. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, any more comments on this particular issue? All right, I'm gonna take the chance to move along then. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. And Thank are you, you Laura. Laura, are you going to tell these people that they're on? You you want in contact or no, where's Wendy? I don't I forget already. I'm happy to contact everybody and organize the first meeting, you know, okay. get it posted, get people. Uh, I think the goal is to meet in a COVID safe in person opportunity because if they're going to be working on trails they need to be able to go out and see them so that will all be together and i'm happy to take on the role of getting folks organized for the first for the first meeting of the minds thank you very much you're welcome thank you thanks laura yeah, thank, thank you, you laura <clears throat> all right madam aa um well uh, so the next thing was um, appointing, hiring a position for administrative assistant, and you have one applicant who is Mariah Silly. Gee, so, what, if, what if we don't like her? Well, you can go into executive <laughs> session and talk about her if you want, but you can do whatever you want to do, or you can just make a motion. I make a motion. We appoint... Um, Mariah as uh, the new AA. You have a feeling on that, John? I didn't know if we're supposed to do interviews or in 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 lieu of competition if we just cast one ballot for Mariah. <laughs> you can interview me if you want. That's fine. I guess, Mariah, well, for the people who don't know you, maybe if there's anybody here who doesn't, maybe you could just speak about yourself a little bit. Sure. So well, my name is Mariah. Tell them about drinking cucumbers and raspberries. <laughs> yes. Mike thinks it's gross that I drink cucumbers and raspberries, but it's good mm -hmm. for you. Um, I am the town clerk. Um, I have been the town clerk since September. Um, I have been working through COVID and um, through some elections and that type of thing, um, figuring out all there is to know about the town of Tunbridge, but I've been really enjoying it. Um, my background is I worked in um, Food and beverage actually at the Queechee Club up in management for the last six years and then um, I went to college at Castleton where I received my bachelor's degree in biology so all things town clerk um, and yeah I've been really enjoying it and I'm looking forward to um, hopefully this administrative assistant aspect of it and just kind of tie everything all together. All right thank you very much. Yeah. And I, I, I have to say, I think you're doing a great job as town clerk, so. Thank you. And Wendy, you'll be able to stick around a bit and, and break Mariah in. Yeah, we go anywhere. <laughs> we met last week, too, and, and talked about you guys. <laughs> I learned everything I needed to. <laughs> I tried to dissuade her, but. Yeah. <laughs> and you still want the job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Glutton for punishment, you know? Yep. All right, John, do you have a second? Or did I you? Do. Have a second? I second Mike's motion. All right. All in favor of hiring Mariah Silly, please say aye. 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 And that would start, that would start when? Um, I 
think that we talked that this was going to be Wendy's last meeting. Um, with everything going on right now with our family, she's going to finish the minutes for this meeting. And then I will um, kind of take over like her email and things like that next week. Um, and then start with the meetings, the, the next select board meeting. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Um, you ready for the next item? Yeah. Make a time frame plan for voting on the town plan. Hmm, maybe we need Laura's help on that. Is she still there? Oh, she is. I see. Come back, Laura. I'm here. <laughs> what is your what is the question that I can help with? <clears throat> Wendy, repeat your. Um, make a time frame plan for voting on the town plan. So I remember we had to warn that like 15 days ahead or something. There was a little bit of a extra thing, but I was wondering um, what you were hoping for from the select board. So the planning commission is receiving questions about the timeline, so it's good to talk about it. Uh, we delivered it um, to you, the draft, the final draft version back in, what, January or February. Our understanding is that you have up to a year to adopt it. Whenever you make the decision to adopt it, you have to warn that meeting, the decision meeting, at least 15 days in advance. And it's best practice to share the edits that you have made, if any, prior to, so that folks can come prepared to converse um, about it. So it would be a, a meeting where you'd want to take public comment. So I, I'll re remind you and just the folks on the call that the town plan is a guidance document. It's not a policy document. And so it may contain language that you want to change or, or disagree with, um, or that will not actually come into enforcement because it is a guidance document. So there is language in there that some feel is contrary to the work of the trails committee in that it does highlight that legal trails should be able to be accessed by multiple user groups beyond walkers or pedestrians. Um, again, because it's not a policy document, you could adopt it and then you could adopt a policy later on that says actually the trails are only for uses by particular groups. So there is that bit of nuance to it. Um, you could also revise whatever any and all language that you feel like you want to revise. It is just, it's in your hands now um, to, to take across the finish line and get adopted. And since we delivered to you a couple months ago, you know, you've got 10 months. I don't know if you want to wait that long. That would be certainly up to your own prerogative when you'd want to do it, but it is a warm meeting where you take comment to get it to the final version that then we then uh, submit to the state or the administrative assistant, Mariah, has the pleasure of submitting it to the state and getting the proper signatures on it. Laura, are there any deadlines, not just our deadline, but for Two Rivers or anybody else to, to have this done sooner or later? Does it really matter within our year? My understanding is that it doesn't, they, so we have a, a plan in existence, the 2017 plan. The state requires you to update your plan at least every eight years. We uh, did it before because when the last plan was done, there was an issue with some of the maps um, not being updated correctly. And so that was the primary reason that we reopened it to fix those issues about um, floodplains and some of the other state approved maps that didn't get put in. 
So it's not that we don't have a town plan. We're not out of compliance or anything. Um, it's just that there is that timeline that's set by the state that it does have to be adopted within a certain amount of time of the uh, select board receiving it. And essentially, if I'm in legislative mode here, did this did this come out of uh, the planning commission with with an unanimous vote, like everybody was on board with this town plan? Yeah. So we um, hosted a number of session work sessions that were publicly uh, warned people could join us for public comment. Then we held the final listening session. Um, when we adopted it in, I think November of last year, um, which we warned according to the state standards, we had one person join us to give comment and then the planning commission voted um, to deliver it to the select board as it was written. Um, there were minimal edits that came out of that last meeting. But so I understand that the select board can essentially amend it, right? As long as we publicize those amendments That's prior, correct. prior to the, the open meeting. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can change 100% of it or none of it. <laughs> um, it's, it's sort of in your court now to do with as you see fit. Our, our role as the planning commission is to work with Two Rivers to update it according to state standards and guidelines, make sure we're addressing all the right topics that we've developed um, and put into the right places, suggestions, recommendations, policy recommendations, um, the vision for the future of the town that we're talking about roads and emergencies and hazards, all those kinds of things. And then we deliver it to you to make the ultimate decision on if you'd like to adopt it as is or amend it. Right. Well, I think, I, I mean, just given our nascent trails committee here, I think it might be better to wait, shoot for maybe this, this fall for, for our approval. What do you think, Gary, Mike? I'm okay with that. Just, I yeah. don't want to wait till the last second and then find out <clears throat> that we missed right. the deadline. Right. right. We want to kind of keep abreast of it. I think. Maybe maybe um, talk about it again after the July 15th date or that's, July that's 30th date or whatever. Yeah. Well, let's aim for, for like, I don't know, August or maybe even September, but let's aim for August. Okay. All right. Is that all we need to do on this subject or we need to no, that was it. We just no. just to sort of get that up into your All right. realm of thinking. Yep. And it's figure out. Thinking. Yep, there we go. All right. So then the next thing is All right, thank you, know, you, Laura. I see John has his hand up. Oh, oh, I sorry. I'm sorry. John, go ahead. Um, if if one had comments on the plan, could one just send an email to the select board at any time between now and August? Is that sure? Thanks. All right, now go ahead, Wendy. Um, decide on prices for transfer station. I don't know if anybody got Mike's list yet. Has anybody talked to Mike? I see. Rudy, do you have a question about what we were just talking about? Well, I had uh, <clears throat> a, I was just looking at the plan bylaw ad adoption tools and Technically, the legislative hearing uh, is supposed to be held within 120 days of the submission from the planning commission. Mm. The, the, the legislative hearing, the adoption, the actual adoption has a year. And there's a specification that if that 120 days is not met, it does not invalidate the plan or amendment. Hmm. Does that mess up the what the the select board adopting it then? It it does not. the The specification says it does not invalidate the the plan or 
amendment of it, but technically uh, the legislative hearing is supposed to be held within 120 days. Hmm. And when was it officially delivered? Laura said January. I think it was December 10th, if I remember right. Well, I'd have to go back and look at my notes because there was a period of time when we had it after our meeting in November and we made some final edits with Kevin. So it was either, it was either De December or January um, that we delivered it to you. I can look at the minutes too. I think it was in January, but I'm not 100% sure. But if Rudy's saying it's it's more of a recommendation than something that will right. put you in deep trouble with the state, then maybe we can just ignore that recommendation. <laughs> well, they probably just don't want us to wait till the last minute. Right. <clears throat> okay, well, I guess we'll just proceed onward. So anyway, back to um, transfer uh, station prices. Yeah, if nobody's seen Mike, I mean, I, I tried to call him, but I didn't get through. So should have tried harder, I guess. You haven't seen him, have you, John? I saw him what, two Saturdays ago because Rod was doing it last Saturday. Um, and yeah, he was, he kept, he said he was going to try to get on, I think, our meeting then, but that didn't happen. So um, I don't know. My, my feeling is it's probably, we, we should probably, even if it takes going down there sometime for an hour and just talking about this, because it always comes up at meetings and it seems like it's hard to do our our jottings during these meetings. It might be better just to uh, actually on site sort of think about all this stuff. Okay. But it's up to you guys with Mike, Mike Barnaby. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to try to do that, John, or? or... I can. Because you're a friend of the dump. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what Mike's availability is on, a, you know, because we could just do it before or after maybe um, a dump day. Yeah. You know, a Wednesday night or a Saturday afternoon um, or morning, whatever works with you guys and Mike and try it then. Okay, well, we'll try to get it done by next meeting then. Okay. Because we need to we need to do something about that. Yeah, and then Kathy Taramy was also investigating, Kathy's on, on the meeting. Um, okay. You know, some of the specifics of recycling and she had questions about, for example, where, um, where the recycling went. I know Casella takes it, but I don't know if it goes to yeah, the, board whether, <laughs> whether whether Casella takes it to Central Vermont Solid Waste Management Management Districts, what is it called, Kathy? And I think you had it right, Central Vermont Solid Waste this, Management District. No, but but the oh. the singles stream. Oh, zero sort. Yeah, what's that called? That you, you oh the rec the <laughs> um materials recovery facility. Right. Is that what? Okay. MRF or whatever. Yes. There's, there's some, okay. And I think Tadella has one, and then I guess Central Vermont has one too. And we, I wasn't sure where are those roll offs head once they leave Rec Road. And the reason I was asking that is because um, Tumbridge is a member town of Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, and they issue a lot of guidelines for recycling. And if we have a private hauler, the town is running its own transfer station. We have to find out if Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District's guidelines 
apply to our hauler and where they're taking it. So I didn't know, I don't know if that's a town clerk question or Wendy, if, if you know that, or is it the treasurer who, if, it, if the select board doesn't know that, who in the town knows where our recycling goes. And I know John, you had mentioned to me that there's all different kinds of pickups. I'm talking about not the appliances and the furniture and the tires, but the zero sort recycling, the plastic bottles and aluminum cans, that kind of thing. Well, I think Casella would know. So what's, Mitch, what's Mitch's name? Mitch, Mitch Ryder, Mitch Ryder. <laughs> I know, we always call it Mitch Ryder, but something else. Mitch, Mitch Taylor, Mitch Taylor. Mitch Taylor. Yeah. So we'll get, you, we'll get you his contact info, Kathy. Is that, is that something, I mean, I'm, I'm inquiring about this as a resident. Is it, is that something that I, I can make that call or email and find out on behalf of the town? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's unanimous. Um, yes. I did. I have, I'm attending some of Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District's webinars that they're offering right now. Um, they just did their first one last week and it's really detailed. And I used the example of the foil balls at the last select board meeting. Um, but wow, there's, you know, there's a lot that they take, but it has to be prepared in a certain way or it gets thrown away. And there's some things that they don't take and numbers don't mean anything anymore. So number two printed on plastic doesn't mean it's recyclable or they accept it. Um, and something that doesn't have a number on it doesn't mean it can't be recycled. So I would, I just want the answer to that question of if all of those guidelines apply to Tunbridge, we can really do a better job educating the community to make sure everybody knows what's recyclable and what isn't. And it seems to change pretty regularly. So kind of keeping up on that. Hmm. So since you've been uh, looking at their webinars, are you still interested in possibly being our delegate? Yeah, I need to find out. They, so I did, someone did contact me and they're calling it a board member. Um, and I didn't understand it that way because I think on the Tumbridge Town website, it says rep. And so I didn't know if it's like rep on the board and if that's just how they do it is every town gets one rep. So I'm trying to find out, I need to know what that job description is or what's involved, what the commitment is. Um, you had mentioned like a certain number of meetings a year, but really like what that role is. And, and I just need to make sure it's something I can commit to. And, um, but I'm really interested in making sure like our community is recycling, right? So things aren't ending up in the landfill. Um, so that's kind of what's driving my interest. And if that's a good fit for me to be the rep, then, you know, I'm happy to, to do that. Uh, I just need to find out what's involved. Okay, well, I hope you say yes, because we haven't had a rep forever. <clears throat> yeah, so, yep. So I, I'll watch for that contact information then for Casella, try to get that answer and, um, you know, try to be on the next um, select board meeting maybe to give an update if I have one. All right, thank you. So that didn't answer our question. Well, that, that, that wasn't the question about pricing. Was, that didn't get answered. So we're going to have to look into that and what do you call it? Table that till the next meeting. Okay. Well, we're still on the transfer station because Mick McGuire. Oh, right. This might be our big day, our big Not, unveiling. I think it is. I think it's Sunday or Saturday, I guess. He told me ahead of time, so I already know the answer. <laughs> Tell everyone else, Mick. Well, the words of a very famous prime minister from the UK, I have in my hand a piece of paper. This is not a peace treaty. It's, uh, it's an actual invoice generated by the website for a transfer station ticket. So <clears throat> um, basically, um, Becky and I got together. We added the town's bank information to the Shopify site. So the whole thing is completely operational. The only thing that we haven't done <clears throat> is made it public. So it needs, it needs to basically have a, a link on the website so people can find it and we need to announce it and what have you. But the whole thing um, works. Um, the 
fees. I worked out the, the credit card fees and what have you and the shipping fees. <clears throat> and it's around about, so it's, it's like 2.9% plus, I figured um, about a dollar, which would cover the 30, the, so the basic, the credit card fee is 2.9 plus 30 cents. And I figured about another 70 cents for the postage, which would be like 50 cents. And then you've got to cover the envelope and the piece of paper printing out and what have you. So I worked out a, a shipping schedule based on that and then put it into bands. So sort of up to $30 would be $1.85, um, up to $60 would be $275. <clears throat> up to ninety dollars, three sixty, those sorts of. So that kind of gives you a flavor of what the shipping and credit card processing is going to cost, and that's charged through when you when you put it in the cart. Um, so if I was to say go and buy two thirty dollar tickets, I'd be charged two seventy five to have those shipped to me. Um, and that really, I mean, the town is is not losing anything on that, but not really making anything on it either, which was was the idea. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of ready to go. Um, the page itself, um, I can, I can show you what we have now. Um, oh, someone will have to enable that for me to be able to do the, to share my screen. So somebody wants to allow me to share my screen. I can just show the page as it, show, as it is now. I don't know who has control of the meeting. Is that you, Wendy? Yeah, I just made you a co-host. Is that working? All right, let's try it. Yep, that looks like it's going to work. So this is what the page looks like now. Obviously, the test page thing would need to be have a different title. Um, and really on here is just the three different sizes of tickets. I put on a, we could change this text, but kind of a some guidance, obviously it's not the full, what, what the ticket is likely to be used for, but just some guidance. So large trash bags for $3, midsize or car tires for $2 or small trash bags for the $1 ones. Um, that's easily changeable. Um, and basically we just, we can add them to the cart and here we go. Um, you go through the checkout, you probably now can't see the screen, but there's a pop-up window. I can see if I can present that, but I don't know how to do that. Ooh, it's getting beyond my Zoom abilities, which is great considering I work in IT here. Huh? All right, stop share. Let's do it. Ooh, I've lost it. All right, try once more. So I get this little pop-up window that comes up like this uh -huh. when I put it in, right? It's pre-filled in because I bought before. It collects me kind of lists of customers and what have you, which makes it easy to check out another time. Um, I can go to, so there we go. Shipping and credit card fee is how I described it. So hopefully there won't be any, well, I'm sure there will, but hopefully it'll cut down some of the, why are you guys charging so much to ship me these tickets? Um, and then through, I don't need any dump tickets at the moment, so I'm not gonna fill this in, but essentially what will happen is this goes through, I get an email um, to the email address supplied that says, yeah, we've got your order. Um, Becky gets a, there's a portal where she can go in. She gets an email saying there's an order and then there's all the orders and she can basically ship them out, print the invoices and they're done. And the money gets deposited directly to the town's bank account. I don't know on what the schedule for that is, but it's a regular schedule. Hmm. Is there a way to track on the, on the, in the treasury? you know, what's been coming in from Yeah, Spotify. let me, let me show you the, um, I will show you the actual screen that like Becky will see. So this is, it doesn't look much. This is, I've logged in here to the back end of the store. But if I look at orders, here was the order that we placed that resulted in that ticket I showed you. 
you can see that it was fulfilled. So she's marked it as being shipped there. So you'll always get this. There will also be um, somewhere. <laughs> I'm not all that au fait with this. Somewhere there'll be a, this is what's been deposited to your bank account kind of stuff. Not 100% sure where it is at the minute. There's a lot of stuff here because it's actually built more for doing websites and even point of sale. Grass abandoned. We can even see people who basically started the car and then left it. So there was me, me a minute ago, that sort of thing. List of all people who have bought before. Just can't see the bank one. I, was, I saw it earlier, so I know it's around somewhere. So there's our rate, 2.9 plus 2.3%. We can add PayPal if we wanted to, but we haven't done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to end up hunting around for this. I, I can assure you it's there um, and it will be a list of exactly the monies that have been paid and what's been deposited and what have you, John. So rather than sort of holding up looking for it, um, if you're willing to trust me, I can assure you it's there. No, that sounds great. Um, and it's so far, it seemed pretty easy to use. So um, I think... I think it's in good shape whenever you guys want to go live and however you want to go live with it. And that's just, <clears throat> um, pardon my ignorance, but that's just connected to the town website then. So anybody just logs onto the website and... Yeah, it's, it's on the website at the moment, Gary, but there's just no way to get there unless you actually know the address. And I think what we probably want to do is put it onto the transfer station page as a link, buy your bump tickets by credit card or what have you here. Um, and then maybe tell people via Facebook or what have you that it's available as well. Um, so people can start using it. Is that something that Jeff Hansen could set up or is that something you would yeah. do? We'd need Jeff to set it up because he looks after the website, but yeah. it's probably a 30 second edit to be honest. Oh. Um, I mean, I don't know if, um, so let me just, so if I go back to the, um, the screen share again. So my assumption would be maybe under um, transfer station. Yeah. There will be something under here, like a link here that says you can buy your dump tickets, um, transfer station tickets, and that would click through to that page I just showed that, you. That sounds yeah. easy. Um, and we'd probably want to put, you know, you've been talking a lot of the time about like putting a schedule of fees. This probably should be on this page too, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but again, both of those would need Jeff. Yeah, I think if we made it as simple as possible and said like, you need tickets, you know, especially Tumbridge, Tumbridge residents, we should probably figure that out. And then, you know, here are your three options. like go through the town clerk and this is how you do it. Go through the library, this is how you do it. Or the link right to online. Yeah, that's a good point, John, because it doesn't actually say on here how to get the tickets, I don't think, does it? Oh, it does. Can be purchased at the town office during open hours. I don't think it says about the library, that's all. So it probably should say something about that on there, I guess. Yeah, just something easy I'm so that in, in the future, you know, even if there's another, you know, like the general stores or, right. you know, at, at the rec field or at the dump, you know, whatever it would be, we could easily just update it. So I guess my, I'll go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, so my question to you guys is if you're happy with me working with Jeff and just taking it live or, I mean, I don't know how we can mock this up without making it live, um, but we could we could basically put the changes you're asking there and 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 get it live on the site and 
what have you um, after this meeting if you want. As far as I'm concerned, if you're willing to do it, you've got the job. Yeah, sounds <clears throat> like a good idea. Cool. John's nodding yes. <laughs> I'm nodding yes. <laughs> All right. So you got then, it. I guess, you know, next Tumbridge quarterly or at town meeting, we can start getting the word out. Right. right. But there's a new exciting way to, <laughs> yeah. to buy tickets. Right. And there is actually one soon. thing I one thing I do need to do is I'm currently paying for the Shopify site. I just need to switch that over to the town as well, but I'll do that with Becky. Okay. Thank and you so much. We'll we'll reimburse you. Yes. Um, it's like 18 bucks so far or something. It's not it's not gonna break the bank. <laughs> We'll give you raspberries and cucumbers in the water. <laughs> Mick, when it's up and running, just have Jeff like send an email to me or Mariah, who's ever in charge at the time, and we can put a put a word out on front porch for him. Awesome. I will do. All right. All right, town meeting plans you are gonna discuss with Brenda Field. And so this is, and talk about the pro COVID protocols and what your guys' visions are for town meeting. All right, Brenda, step forward, please. <laughs> First off, I am not the COVID control queen. You're not a queen? I'm not, not the COVID <laughs> control queen or constable, so. No. Who, who, who described you as that? Someone said that I'm in charge of all, all things COVID. I, it was a czar. Oh, <laughs> czar. I'd go with a czar. So I did call the state. And as you guys know, I mean, Alex Buskey, yeah. Judy Howe, a lot of people have been calling me. They're all different dates. And, you know, every, every date, they're changing things up from the state as this thing evolves. So it's kind of hard to give someone a lot of information except that what's being given out right now, but the town, the state does have the Vermont forward plan where they try to project what it's gonna look like. And for us in May, you know, and it depends on the numbers of vaccinated people, but what they're hoping for is that outdoors, and we're gonna do town meeting outdoors, right? One of the big fair buildings with the doors all open, outdoors. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So that'd be 300 unvaccinated people plus any number of vaccinated, but then they got the little caveat down there. If you haven't noticed it, if there's no way to determine who's, if everybody's vaccinated, you have to treat the whole group like they're unvaccinated. And then the only other thing I, when I called the Department of Health for any input, they thought it was kind of interesting. We were doing this and kind of cool. So kudos to us. But they, they suggested the food part of it. If We're going to have food, right? I hope so. So to have it more of a buffet idea or think about either buffet or you have a limited number of people or family pods that come up as a group, they get theirs and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, the microphone, you know, just the obvious, if we put it on a stick and it should be, you know, we can put one of those cheap gloves over it. <laughs> hand gloves yeah. and the person that Henry running around carries a little trash bag with him and he pulls that off and he's gloved of course and he can wipe things down and put that in his little garbage we'll give him a green up bag Eliza will save one for him <laughs> and that's pretty much all they said they said keep them in the loop if we have any more questions that's that's all I have. If you're planning it, it sounds like a great idea. What we're thinking of, I think it sounds like fun. Brenda, are there are there Department of Health and CDC recommendations for what you do with food with big groups like that? Because we there, should try to follow that. And what what are you talking about? Like delivery of it or how you serve people? Yeah, just just if they recommend, okay, three hundred people and they're all potentially gonna, you know, buy a lunch. What what does that look like well, as far as doing saying. it safely? 
he said that's the tricky part whether we yeah. do a buffet style and no. limit the the groups of people that are actually coming up you know you can you can have someone that's protected taking the tickets and then only allow a certain number to come up and actually get their meal and if people want to they could have it more it's already dished out they pick it up and move on type of thing so limited groups was this big thing yeah well, it okay. would make a difference on what what's been served. For one, I don't know. I think I think the library people are interested in serving the meal. Well, this is one of the reasons we're talking now, so they can kind of they can wrap their heads around this a little bit and figure right. out their menu and coordinate with the COVID czar. <laughs> <laughs> But it seems to me that we, it's definitely not going to be a meal like normal town meeting. We it just can't be. Or if we just have maple creamies. It'd be okay with me. Okay. As long as I can get seconds. <laughs> yeah, you can't have that tight knit close line all lined up going up there, obviously. They want to have that more controlled. Maybe but we should be able to do this. Maybe, maybe down on the fairgrounds, we can have people come up and get their food at, at a whole range of period of time it's not just right, right. I, I don't know that that's up for that's up for the food people to get imagine about it they a lot of them do it from the school anyway so they have some familiarity with they're doing with the kids well we have one more meeting one more select board meeting before town meeting and so maybe we could uh, one of us could talk to the library people and see what they're thinking now yeah. And, you know, is Alex Buskey going to be on tonight? Uh, I haven't he's seen supposed, him. He's supposed to, but I don't see him on yet. Because he, he's been trying to contact me, and I, I know I was hit and miss. I finally emailed him, and all I gave him was what is present. But I, I don't, I think he was talking up more when he has the bike event, when they actually hold it, which would be in June. Right. Things, things might be quite a bit different in June. Well, then, then he sent an email recently about his, it was a fairly long email about the protocol that he's going to use and all of that. I, stuff. Did, I didn't get that protocol. He was trying to talk to me and, and I was out, you know, really missing him. Seems like I just read it this morning or sometime. I can forward that to you, Brenda. Okay, thanks. All right. I, and my advice is the same to him if I miss him tonight. It's the same, you know, just keep an eye on what the state's saying. Because right now, I think I told him, you know, if he's got out of staters coming, they have to show proof of, of a COVID free test within three days of arrival here. And that his biggest problem will be everybody's so excited in the summer to see each other. It's not the participants as much as all the people who are gathering. Right. Cheer them on, you know, and they start to drop their up their cautions, but by June, hopefully things are different. And he can stay in touch. He, he can try calling me some more as we get closer to June. <laughs> All right, anything else? Ms. Uh, oh, do, do you guys? Go ahead, Wendy. Oh, and so what's your vision for the, for the, where you're going to hold it and everything. Oh, right. And well, like, I, if we need to get in touch with Betsy or Todd about equipment or, you know, things that we might want to line up. My, my thought was to try to hold it in the pulling arena because you got bleachers on each side and then you got the whole center opened up and it's open on both sides, both ends. So the wind's going to blow through nicely. Um, and it does have a PA system already. Gary, the only other thing we have to be aware of is, again, if we have out-of-staters that come, people traveling here, we've got to ask them, you know, keep hand sanitizer on and ask them to show if they want to watch us or anything. Yeah. They need, they need to have a, a test free within three days. 
The big question I have is how many people are going to show up, whether we're going to have the normal 200 or whether we're going to have less or we're going to have 400 or something. I, I'm curious. I'm curious too. I got a feeling it could be more because people would be eager to get out. Right. I hope so in a way. Probably depends on the weather too. Yeah. If it's snowing, there probably won't be so many people. <laughs> right. Well, they're wise. They are wise on that side of the hill. <laughs> who's who's liaison to to the fair on this too? Just depending on buildings and uh, I can electricity. Be okay. Because I called Alan initially and asked him if we could do it, and he said yes. So I'll call him and put it on my to do list. There may be some interest in this. I know Ann Galloway from VT Digger was in contact with me over a month ago. Yeah. And she was talking about something. And I said, well, we're not having our town meeting until our date in May. And she said, how are you doing that? And I told her, and she said, oh, we might have to put that on our docket. If so, she'll be talking to the czar. I don't think so. <laughs> She'll be talking to the select board. <laughs> I have talked to her before. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, anything and then more? It, <clears throat> okay, so in is a PA system, is there gonna be a place? I mean, do you guys have to crawl up into that little thing well, up that, above or yeah. That's something I'll talk with Alan about to see if, okay. if that'll even work. Or, and if not, I'll get hold of Todd and just see if, if what he has would work better. So I'll make an, a, an asterisk for that too. Okay. And then I guess at the next meeting, you can just, um, you know, come up with, we should just inform people of how it's going to be and the rules and stuff. So right. people don't all come running down there and hug each other or whatever Brenda doesn't want us to do. It's not, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep saying that. And, and voting too, right? With one, another line situation we want to avoid. Yeah, that's true. So we might have to have a few of us help people because if they start talking, you know, they'll just naturally forget you know, and start to get close to each other. I mean, right. it might might be do well for us to to get like four or five volunteers to just assist. I think we ought to have a way. I think we ought to have a COVID police and you would be the chief. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good job for the constables. <laughs> Do you need a gun for that? <laughs> yes. It's optional. Blue light. Or a badge. Radio. Uh, radio is good, yeah. Police car. I think that's a good idea to have, right, half a dozen people and, you know, for the rest of them pink or orange and, and know that they're the volunteers who are, yeah, helping. You, we could dress up Your as deputies. COVID germ. <laughs> it's your COVID germ mask. See, you don't want me in charge of anything. I have big hairy balls running around. <laughs> you know, with the little tentacles that come out of that COVID right. thing. Everybody would be really confused. All right, anything more on that, Wendy? No, but it goes into um, confirm <laughs> Memorial Day celebrations on the fairground. You guys had talked about Monday, July 5th. So, um, and the fire department, remember, they wanted to know right. for sure. Well, the rec committee also wanted to know because they were wanting to know about Kelpi bingo and all that stuff. Um, and Tracy Amell wanted to know about whether we were going to have Memorial Day or not. So I called her and said we were not going to have Memorial Day on Memorial Day. But I don't I don't know. I didn't actually talk to her. I left a message. And I don't know if they're interested in having a or she's interested in, in uh, 
promoting the parade that day. I don't know. So, so you're putting everything off until July 5th? For now, yeah. Oh, that's great. I, mean, I, that, th I that's, think it's a good idea. I think it's, it goes to all my paperwork they keep sending me from the state. July 5th is cool. <laughs> I talked to Simon and he, you know, he said he was going to recommend to the the department that you know they do a barbecue when there are more people. So if we did July fifth, that's that's when they would do it too. I mean they'll they'll do it either day, but he thought it would it just make sense to do it when there are more people. So we should probably go with a date sooner than later. I mean decide on a date sooner than later, just so people can start planning. Well, like did, Tracy and Simon and, and the rec department. Did you say, someone say July 5th was a Monday? Yeah. Or, yeah. July 5th is a Monday. Yes. Is that a normal day off then for people? Or is I, that think it I think it would be. Yeah, usually yeah. it's the Monday. Okay. So that would match Memorial Day, which we usually do it on a Monday, right? No, I'm okay with that. I just didn't want to plan it and then have nobody show up because they're all at work. More <laughs> <laughs> food for me, I guess. <clears throat> no, I think we ought to do it. Should we talk to Alan and see if we can use the fairground? Yeah. Well, how about I'll talk to Alan soon and we can firm it up. <laughs> Solidly next next select board meeting then, but we unofficially can be talking about it for now. Yeah, and maybe call Tracy too and see what. Yep, yep. I still got her what? number. So I'll call oh. her. Oh, in the library, I think wanted to do a book sale or plant sale or something bake sale. Yep. Right. So I'll, I I can talk to Mariah too about that. Oh, just one quick thing. Uh, someone called me about the town hall during using the town hall, Judy called. Gary, you had sent her to me. Yeah. Yep. So when we're indoors during May, it still is, you know, for one unvaccinated person, it's a hundred square feet and up to 150. And then it goes off the size of the building. And then if they don't know who's vaccinated, who isn't, they have to all be unvaccinated. Yeah. So if they can hold it outdoors and they can make arrangements with the fairgrounds, boy, that's, I highly suggest people do that. Go over the town forest. <laughs> so what's the recommendation for town hall then? Is you, are you telling people not to do it? No, I'm not. I just, I think they have to follow the guidelines. That's the only thing I'd say is keep track of the guidelines. If they don't know what they are, I'm glad to tell them. So she was, I don't think she was too happy about it because it still is a little restrictive yeah. for the month of May. Can, can we recommend as a board not, not only follow Department of Health and CDC guidelines, but that we recommend not doing anything until July 4th inside? Well, some of these, you know what, I think some of them were there, um, there were receptions for funerals. Yeah, okay. We've unfortunately got way too many of and I don't yeah. know if they, I think they were going to talk about the fairgrounds, but if it was a bad day, a nasty day, maybe they're worried about the elderly, you know, on being inside. So, you know, it's, it's not like a, but they were actually talking about, um, oh, the Larkin dancers wanted to practice there. So the, I don't know what the square footage is upstairs, but how many people could be in there, Brenda? Do you have any idea? Yeah, there's a percentage. I can look that up and give it to Judy. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking if there was only six people, four, 10, 12, whatever it would be, as long as Judy knew that number, then she could say it would be okay. But Yeah, I don't know how. I think it was a small funeral group for um, for Nancy. Nancy Howe. Right. Yeah. For Ed. But we still got to follow the guidelines. I and mean, Judy felt like they'd already hugged each other, but that isn't unfortunately what the guidelines are. You know, if they've been pre hugged. <laughs> Can we quote you to saying that? Only if you're pre hugged. 
Yeah. I'm gonna make says pre hugging is okay. That's all I got. All right. So, so you'll be in contact with Judy at some point or somehow or whatever? Yeah, I'm going to, I can call her tonight, as a matter of fact. I'll get that done so I don't forget. Okay, thank you. And I don't, I still don't see Alex showing up. You know, and so the same thing holds true. He's way in June. His restrictions going to be a little less, but follow the guidelines. Well, that email I read from him, it was quite extensive, the, his plans, but I, I don't remember any of it now, but but it sounded like he, he really give, put a lot of thought into it. Oh, do you want me to share it for Brenda to read now? Would that work? Or? No, just send it to me and I'll be in touch with him. I think yeah. he's trying to do the right okay. thing. I right. think he wants to not twist people around the corner. Okay. Well, thank I'll you, Brenda. You. Okay. Thank you, guys. Ayanara. Thank you. Yeah, I'm surprised I understand you, Mike. And your dialect usually is not something I'm keen to. <laughs> I have to get my ear adjusted. I've been taking voice lessons. <laughs> English is the second It's language. over the hill. Liza's going to be the same way. I think she's got the same accent. Well, she hasn't lived there very long, so maybe she hasn't adopted that yet. <laughs> okay, you guys. See you. Thank you. See you, Liza. All right. So. I don't see Alex on here, but you guys got his email of yep. what his plans are down there. So, um, and then uh, next person would be Eliza. Look at that, New from West Tunbridge. Oh, green up day. Uh, all right, no, I, yeah, the, the language hasn't changed yet in this household. We're just waiting around. Okay. You sound a lot like Mike. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, so for about green up day, I'm just asking, since I haven't done this before, the message you want me to send one, the first question is when are green up materials welcome at the dump for free? And if, if I, don't, I don't know if you just know that off the top of your head, maybe. I think it's any time you bring in one of those green bags. Okay whether it's May 1st or, or whether it's uh, a week later, it's probably free. Okay. Um, my pen just stopped working. Okay. And then speaking about this tire issue, people keep coming to me. Um, and it's a funny thing in Tunbridge, you know, they come to you and they don't tell you who they are and they don't tell you where they live, but they assume, you know, and I'm getting there, but so I'm not exactly sure where all these tires are, but I've heard reports and it sounds like I saw in your minutes that you all know about some of them too, but there are people who are interested in doing the labor of getting them out and bringing them to the dump, labor and trucks available. Um, but I don't know what that does to the dump if 50 tires show up in one day. And I was hoping Mike might be here or when I was there last Saturday, but I haven't talked to him and so just about the, you know, can we just have a staging ground if we overflow the place or should we keep these projects, sp spread them out more and then paying for the recycling it, they come in as green up materials. There is a grant that Mariah um, shared with me and I don't know if Tunbridge always asks for reimbursement for green up day, but it's up to $400. So that would take care of a lot of tires. And I believe it's, you can use it for that. So I think that we can get reimbursed mm -hmm. for Good. as many tires as come in. Um, does the transfer station just wanna accept them for one to two weeks or um, do you want me to farm out some projects slower than that or any, any advice? How about just the two weeks? Cause then it forces people to do it and not drag it out. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, if, for instance, a whole bunch of tires came in and the tire container was full, you could just stack them on the ground. And then at some point when the road crew has a free minute, they can put them in the dumpster or whatever they go in. We, we used to, um, Brookfield used to park a town truck out there on green up day and then they could show the tires in that. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we have a, a roll-off container for the tires right now. So okay, um, but so it just depends on timing. If the thing's almost full by next Saturday, then we're kind of going to be stuck. But if it's empty, we're all perfect. It was it was peaking over the top last Saturday, but I don't know when it what the schedule is for it. It wasn't overflowing. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll give people the green light to do that. And Mariah said, if you have a receipt for expenses for Green Up Day, I don't know that Mike's in the business of giving out receipts, but I think I can, I'll just tell her, you know, we count how many tires come in and, and right. see if that works. Or maybe she could even make up a receipt, like, like for a dump ticket sort of type of thing. I don't know. I'll guess she can figure that out. Um, and this is and just for tires? Well, I guess it, we could count the bags and do it for that as well, up to 400. I don't know if that's what you've done in the past. And I don't know. I don't know. I guess try to have Mike just, or someone keep track of it. Mike's yeah. good at counting. He mean, counts the cars every time, so. Right. <laughs> I mean, Probably I'm going to be there and I was going to count because they want me to send in that information, so we'll have an idea of a number that okay. will probably help us get to $400. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, there were just, there was two other things. One was, it was suggested to me and I just wanted as people who know this town better than I do that this is what I'm, I don't know if this is exactly a select word issue, but you're in my living room. So I have questions for you. So um, someone suggested maybe we should have like an Ed Howe award for like most bags collected or something in honor of Ed Howe. And I tried to call Nancy, but didn't get through to her today to ask if that was a good idea or not. Um, and I would pursue that. And I don't know that we actually have anything to give anyone, but I just not knowing if that was an appropriate thing to do, I thought I would ask you all. I think it'd be pretty neat. Okay. The, the definitely try to connect with Nancy too. Yeah. Okay. And then the second idea I had when I, I ran in, I ran into Kathy on Facebook, I guess it was, <laughs> um, that she, they were going to try to open that cook shack. And I wondered if, and then I actually just messaged with her a little bit more about it just now that we thought that we would get a few people to donate some money. And if you are dropping off a green up bag, you get like $2 to go spend at the cook shack. Yep. And, and it would be in honor of Bob Rogers. And I would, I don't know if it, if we'd call him Bob Bucks or something, but um, we would, I would reach out to Margaret about that. And that would just be self-funded by a few of us who would want to make that happen. Um, and hopefully it would make some more money for the rec committee as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, okay, I think that's all I have. Do we, do we know who, if the tire roll offs full, Wendy, do we know who, will they, they come, you know, ASAP and take it away or is it on a schedule? I can check into that. Yeah, because if we could I get it empty by green up day, that would be great. Yeah, especially if it's almost full, it'd be worth their while right. to come and get it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'll look and, into that. And actually, there's um, conflicting information around about how much a tire is two dollars. Is that right? A tire, tire, yeah. Okay. A tire, tire is a small truck tire, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the small ones, the big ones. Mike said were more, but for green up there, you could just say they were two. Thank you. All right, Rudy. You, oh, Elijah, don't go anywhere. Rudy, did you find out any more information on the that tire program? Yeah, it's Bridgestone that runs it. It's called Tires Tires Forward with a four, and um, they you have to contact them. They they definitely have gotten more persnickety about it, and they want the tires uh, clean at this point. So pressure washed or something. Um, but 
I I did not get the minimum. I, I want to say it's, it's 100 tires, um, and they want them staged in an area. They want it basically to be, uh, you know, they have a, a cherry picker or something come in, and, and they want it to be completely streamlined. Uh, so they the program used to be a lot more active, and it's gotten harder to get them to do that, but it is still a, a going going program so um it probably would need some advance notice and, and coordination with them there's an application process for the program that sounds hard yeah but you know um worth, worth bearing in mind you know if we if we keep running into this right we just we'd have to have organization to you know essentially deliver them you know, up to their specs. Right. And, and having a staging area and being able to, to get them clean. Right. Yeah. I mean, not impossible, but they definitely don't make it easy. Above my pay grade for this week, but, and if the tire problem situation doesn't get fixed by next year, if the, we don't get cameras out there, Jeremiah Karen offered to, uh, have words with whoever is dumping them. Okay. Um, <laughs> I said we could put camera feed direct to his house. Um, but if it wasn't fixed, I mean, it doesn't, we, you know, you could get a power washer and set up at the dump and take them all in and, and set them up, but not on Saturday. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, not this year. <clears throat> All right, anything more for Eliza? And you're, you're, you're very excited about your new position, Eliza, and all the prestige it brings you and all of that stuff and fame. I'm, I'm really growing into it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you kids look up to you more now that you're Green Up director? She's a czar, actually, Green Up czar. <laughs> That's right, yeah, Brenda and I, are, we've, we're hatching our plans to take over the town <laughs> one pandemic and Green Up day at a time. <laughs> All right, Wendy, what's next? Uh, mowing around the town buildings. Oh, right, right. Uh, we just need to uh, put out a, what is it, a solicitation or whatever for, for mowing so that we can decide that by next meeting. Yeah. Okay, so you want to get to the thing You want, me, you want me to put something out on front porch forum and everything? Well, we, Saying, is this going to be this? We need somebody insured and everything again, like a yeah. mowing company. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if we can find out what we did last year or not, but they have to mow around what they, the signs entering both north and south of town, the welcome signs, and also the, this. A, sign each for the village too that we always forget about and then around the town office the library the transfer station am i forgetting anything now oh yeah i guess that's about it around the town office like that little section where the tree is <laughs> well that plus out back, just a little tiny bit out back. Okay. There's probably a job description from past bids when you're a file. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have a, a price or are you gonna talk to oh I see they're gonna they're gonna give right. me a number or yeah. Okay. All right. Who did it last year? I think it was Eli Childs, but I could be wrong. Okay, well, I'll just put it out there and- Yeah, yeah I know Eli's interested. Oh, okay. He's probably listening in right now. <clears throat> okay, well, that's good people are interested in. All right, so then approve warrants. Oh, I looked them over and I didn't see anything wrong. How about Mike, did you look them over? I didn't see him. When did we get him? 
I still I looked them over this morning, early this morning. Huh. No, I checked before I come home. I didn't get them. So. Huh. Maybe she just sent them to me. So I guess they're all right. No, I, I think they came in early this morning. I haven't had a chance to look at them. No, there was nothing out of the ordinary. Then I make a motion you sign them if you're happy. I don't know if I'm happy, but I'll sign them anyway. Yeah, they I came second, in. April I second 20. that motion. All right. All in favor of me signing them, say aye. Aye. Right. Approving the, the warrants. We've approved the warrants. Yeah, it was sent yesterday, it says. But anyway. Huh. Yes, I missed that boat. Yep. All right, those are all approved. I see that Alex is here. Is there any questions you have for him about his ranger thing? I, I don't have any questions, but he might just give us a brief overview of what's going to happen. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry I'm late. I could have sworn this was tomorrow and I totally missed it. Um, so a uh, brief overview is that um, so this year we're planning on having a physical event, as you know, and um, as of now, our plan is to um, modify what we've done in years past, which would be to have more of a tailgating style event than um, everyone going and riding at one time and coming back and gathering around music and food and drink. So um, the plan, as I outlined in the email that I believe you all received over the weekend was that um, we would have a, a one-way um, vendor loop basically that uh, would allow for Brockle Bank and Upper Pass to um, serve drinks uh, and then also um, the Ugly Onion Pizza Oven to serve food and it would all be prepared ahead of time. Um, Brockle Bank and Upper Pass are discussing just doing a an open can sale, although it's uh, more waste than we'd like to have. It would uh, remove the issue of having uh, reusable drinks and worrying about rinsing. And um, so the general structure of the event is to avoid uh, basically a, a large crowd um, and parking area at the fairgrounds will allow for us to have the use of more picnic tables over a larger area than we've rented in the years past. And um, everyone in that fenced in area, which is where the alcohol permit is, um, will also have a, um, a gate and anyone inside of that area is going to be required to wear a mask. Because um, whether we like it or not, that's whether there's going to be a, a large gathering or not, that's where the most people are going to be. So. Um, that's a really general outline of, of our plans. And uh, I'd like to keep everyone here on the select board updated as we go forward. Um, right now we have 213 people registered. We're closing registration at the beginning of May. We will not allow um, same day registration to happen um, to avoid lines. And um, this event in the past has been a little bit larger. Um, so it will be smaller than, than say in 2019 where we had around 125 riders. So if anyone has any questions, you can ask me now. I know it's late there in Vermont um, or you can email them to me and I'm happy to, um, to respond quickly. Oh, sounds to me like you got everything under control. So I wish you well. Good okay. luck. Thanks, Gary. Alex, what kind of numbers do you think you're looking at? Yeah, right now it's, like I said, 213 people are registered and that most of those people are, are folks that we transferred from last year's registration um, to this year that bought a registration. We weren't able to have an event and uh, so I, I don't know, it's hard to say. I don't think it's gonna be the same size as we've had in years past. Like I said, in years past, it's been around 325 riders. This year, the over 90% of the people registering are coming from Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine. Um, and uh, 
in years past, we've had a lot more people coming from Massachusetts, Boston area, and New York. Um, and as of now, it doesn't look lo like we are seeing those people. So um, yeah, I would say somewhere around 250 riders. Right. And do we have a map of what route you are going to use? Well, this year I'm actually, as you all probably know about the planning, the discussions of the planning commission about legal trails. Um, we've never, the only legal trail we've ever used is the, I believe the crossroad. And um, this year I'd like to avoid using the crossroad altogether um, to avoid any conflicts. <clears throat> so I will, I will send the route because last or in, yeah, last year when Jillian was the clerk, we were going to have um, um, a notice sent out to everyone along the route to let them know when riders would be coming through uh, between what hours. And I'd like to do that again, if, if possible, this year. Um, and I'd like the route to be, you know, included on that. So uh, after this meeting, I haven't yet decided on a route, but um, it will not have the crossroad or any legal trail on it. And um, we might even avoid the, uh, what is it, uh, Westmore Road there to um, up in uh, off of the Kibling Hill Road, there's uh, another class four that we use and we probably will avoid that as well. But I, I'll send a, a route to Wendy to send to the group um, once I have that down. That's great, that'd be super helpful. <clears throat> We've lost our chair. <laughs> He's hungry. <laughs> I don't know if he ate dinner yet. <laughs> Does that mean you can't close the meeting? <laughs> I think we could handle that. You think so? We're not going to be stuck in Zoom world forever. <laughs> Is he gone forever? No. Are we up to other business, Wendy? Yes, we're at other business. Alex is all, unless you guys have anything else to ask Alex. You're all good? I'll, I'll add one more thing. Um, thanks to Wendy, I've been speaking with Brenda Field about this and I've emailed her the same structure, the outline. And she responded back to me. I, she, I'm assuming she was part of the meeting earlier and I just, I missed her, but um, she had uh, had some input for me. And um, so I will also send, I will include in the outline with the, um, with the new route um, to the select board, uh, the input that she gave me too, because I'm not recalling exactly what it was. There were some small things though that were, um, were good ideas for us to, to implement as well at the event. So um, anyway, I just want everyone to know that I was communicating with her too. I forward her your, the letter you sent to the select board too, just so she has that. Back and saw your text and your doubt. I think Alex is frozen. Everybody's freezing up now. Freezing up. <laughs> well, we got any other business? Anybody? Oh, there's Gary. He's coming there's back. Gary. There's Lori. Hello. What happened? What happened to you, Chair? <laughs> you must have nodded off. <laughs> I don't know. I can't see you now. Right and all the computer was getting. So I plugged it in, and, and all of a sudden, everything went blank. So you're still meeting. We're thinking about getting done. All right. I'll entertain that motion. I make a motion. We get done. Okay. I second that. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 
Anybody got a good joke? I guess Alex will have to tell us a joke. All right, Alex, it's up to you. Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, the ones I've known recently might not be appropriate for this meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, put me on the spot here. Well, if you sing it, it's okay if you swear. <laughs> I don't know if it was swearing. <laughs> it would, um, oh, gosh. I don't know of any great jokes. Um, uh, I'll leave it to someone else. <laughs> Wendy, you must have some good jokes. Well, I don't have a, a joke. It's more of a little wisdom nugget that I picked up the other day that uh, um, I can't, I don't have my phone here that had it on it, but it went something like, um, just like, you know, when you die, it, it doesn't really bother you because you're dead. It bothers everybody you leave behind. And, and uh, being stupid is kind of the same way. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I, I have a joke. <laughs> for, our, for our AA. I, 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 maybe she could, she could even play the other part. Okay, knock, knock. Who's there? Wendy. Wendy who? Oh, God. <laughs> Wendy. Wendy, wind blows, the cradle does rock. <laughs> John, <that's awful. laughs> You can look up what knock knock jokes for every name. I bet you <laughs> horrible. That was a horrible joke. <laughs> yeah, there has to be better. So all right, we'll work on it for next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Something appropriate, right? Yeah. Maybe Mariah's got a really good joke. Mariah will she'll pull through. She'll pull through for you guys. Well, you did. Thank you, Wendy, for everything <laughs> you've done. Yes. Yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. All right. So long, everybody. So long. Thanks, all. So See you later.